Yo, Patrick CC with a banger. Uh, a new banger. How one drunken lie destroyed an Olympian's legacy. Uh, who? Oh, comic reading? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't like, I don't know what happened. What you are seeing is security camera footage of four American Olympians leaving the bathroom of a gas station in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This guy right here, that's Ryan Lochte, one of the greatest Olympic swimmers of all time. Okay. In fact, a few days before this clip, he won a gold medal in the 4x200 meter relay. So he and his buddies were out celebrating, and they've had a little too much to drink. They stumble out of the alley. It was cozy. I, you should try to get... I, I just don't know, like, the the legal things around that like reading a comic book that is supposed to be like purchased it's like i feel like that's like reacting to a show like a tv show uh so i don't know the like the legal parameters you know way and try to get into their taxi and leave but then some unmarked officers take out their weapons and demand the swimmers to exit the vehicle next thing you know ryan lochte has a gun pointed at his fort whoa 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 Wait, hold on. Do you know about the YouTube channel SSJ9K? Bro. Back in the day, that was my guy, bro. That was my guy. I used to react to his shit. Like, when I, I'm talking about, like, in the garage, bro. That was my guy. Gun pointed at his forehead, and they rob him of all his money. Well, that's what Ryan told news reporters the next day. But it turns out, he was lying. But not by much. The truth of the story is just a little bit different than what Ryan reported, but that discrepancy was enough to fundamentally destroy Ryan's reputation and swimming career forever. What? In order to fully analyze why this lie was such a massive issue, you have to first understand that Ryan Lochte was a living legend. Oh my god, he pulled the, uh, what's the guy's name that lied about, lied about being jumped? who worked his whole life for his legacy to crumble at the blink of an eye. Ryan earned a swimming scholarship at the University of Florida. Yeah, J Jesse, Jesse, J J Juicy Smooley? <laughs> During his college days, he became the SEC champion seven times, the NCAA champion seven times, as well as earning the NCAA swim. Last pause, that's a lie. But where is he at now? Where's the juice? Where's the J Jesse? Where's the guy at now? of the year twice while being a 24-time All-American athlete. In his senior year, he set the record for the 200-yard backstroke and the 200-yard hey, individual medley yeah. at the 2006 NCAA Men's Swimming and Diving Championships, where he also won national titles in all three of his individual events. Okay. But his dominance wouldn't stop in college. At the 2004 Olympics in Athens, he won a gold and silver medal for the 4x200 meter freestyle relay and 200 meter individual medley. Over the next decade, he'd go on to who's that is that michael phelps lay and 200 meter individual who's that Chat, is that michael phelps i've never seen him smile like that medley over the next decade he'd go on to win a total Kinda of 12 off. olympic medals and seven individually oh, making shit. him the second most decorated american male swimmer behind michael phelps okay he broke multiple world record times for different races including the record for the 200 meter medley that he still holds to this day oh, no, a multi-time swimmer of the year million dollar sponsorship deals with the likes of speedo what Gillette, happened and Ralph man Lauren, a playboy model girlfriend lochte was becoming a global icon alongside michael phelps ryan himself said it was a Magic Johnson and Larry Bird type rivalry. But it was at the peak of Lochte's popularity, immediately after he won the gold medal for the 4x200 relay at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. I, I never heard of him either. But then again, I don't really watch the Olympics like that. His sport defining waves and competitive swimming would all come crashing down. Now you all know that using steroids will get you disqualified from the Olympics. Only if you get caught. But what if you actually had to be on them to qualify? I read this article on Peter Thiel's Olympics on steroids with athletes wearing Apple's Vision Pro. This headline piqued my interest and I wanted to learn more. So using today's sponsor, I read through the ground news. You motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like really like, oh shit, wait, what? You got me. You got me again, man. I don't know how you do it, bro. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. Good job, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You got, you, you got the best ad transitions. I didn't seen in a minute, man. <laughs> You got me, man. News breakdown of nearly 90 articles covering this new doped up version of the notoriously drug free competition. 25% of these articles come from right leaning sources. You could have missed this if you consume mostly conservative. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. This is the this is where you can see what people like what their beliefs are, are stand stand where they stand in, in this left right shit, which I don't I don't even know, man.
Why is left green or blue and and right red? Chat, what's is it is red is left or what's bad? What's bad? Left or right? Why it matter? I guess so. It's like if you read an article, you can know if it's a biased article. You know, right is right. Neither. I just wish, bro. I can, I wish we just lived in a world where we didn't have these labels. Like honestly, it's just. I hate that. Like you could like you could be defined by a label. Instead of just being defined by the person, like just the type of person you are, this automatically just creates separation. If we're, if we're being honest, conservative media go to ground.news/patrickcc to read their summary of this from different political viewpoints. See any key differences in their coverage. It's the or same thing with like a, a, a that astrology shit. Like you know how when people go on dates or if they're talking to somebody, what's your sign? Mm. A side eye because a month I was born in. Fuck you scroll down to read the actual articles. Many focused on how risky this competition could be while others reported Olympic athletes having mixed feelings. An ex-drug cheat slams the enhanced games while a nine-time Olympic champion sees the benefits. By gathering related news articles from across the world and adding context like a source's political lean, how reliable they are, and even who owns them, Ground News makes it really easy to explore your curiosity and learn all sides of a story that could never fit in one single article, which is why I like to follow my favorite- I'm just saying labels create separation that's all i'm saying and i hate it man wait to cole's new leak i thought he officially dropped it it's a leak shout out to kyle blackwood bro it's not happening it's not happening shout out to kyle blackwood man we are not checking out that video we are not checking you you tried you'll get you guys tried to get me out of here you tried to give me a strike on twitch and my youtube channel deleted for topics like music on ground news to really dive deep on stories that might have missed my radar. Blue for demo it, crips and red for reblutikins. You fat pink clipped baboon. Tar donkey. Mud possum. What? It's on his Instagram? Oh. A monthly plan costing less than my daily coffee. I really think they're unlike any other news platform. So check them out at ground.news slash patrickcc and get 40% off the same plan that I use. Their unlimited access vantage plan. On August 14th, 2016, there we go. this tweet that reported Ryan Lochte being held at gunpoint sparked one of the biggest scandals in Olympic Games history. Ben Way, an Australian Fox News reporter, was at the Hotel Grand Mercure conducting interviews with athletes. The hotel was located not far from where the Rio athletes were staying, so this was a hub for interviewers to linger around and try to talk with the athletes. Right. After conducting a few interviews, Ben and his team got on a shuttle that had stops at various hotels around the area. At one of the stops, a woman came out who had injured her foot. Ben and his team quickly helped her and got her on the bus. Once the lady was seated, Ben and her started chatting. Unfortunately, he Kinda soon found me. out that the woman's stay in Brazil was a nightmare. She had broken her foot and her son had been held at gunpoint. Ben could not believe this and asked if her son was okay. She said, yes, he's back at the village. Ben responded, is he an athlete? To which she replied, yes, and he is prone to big nights and that sort of stuff. He has bleached white hair or gray hair or blue hair. I don't really know what it is. Ben's cameraman asked, is your son Ryan Lochte? To which she said, yes, he is. She then elaborated, saying how he had gone to a party late last night with a couple of friends, and he had called her and told her he had been held up at gunpoint, and they stole his wallet and put a gun to his forehead. But luckily, he's back in the athlete's village, and he's okay. Ben and his team couldn't believe that this shocking story just fell into their lap. Oh so God. when they arrived at their next location, which was the Adidas headquarters, they gave just... their notes to Fox Sports Australia, who ran the story just she just spilled all the tea for what two hours later shortly after the news broke the international olympic committee put out a statement saying i can tell you the story is absolutely not true and the united states olympic committee is saying it's a false story so within two hours you had one major news outlet reporting the story as true and the olympics saying it was false people were confused and didn't know who to believe but then lochte himself doubled down on his story a few hours later, Billy Bush, former host of The Today Show, and his friend Kit Hoover were returning from a hike. Upon their return back to town, they just so happened to run into Ryan Lochte, who they had seen from a distance inside a building. Billy Bush swiftly approached Ryan for an interview, while Kit filmed it all on an iPhone because they couldn't get a crew out in time. During this impromptu interview, Ryan Lochte gave his first official statement. We got pulled over in our taxi. 
these guys came out with a badge, a police badge, no lights, no nothing, just a police badge. They pulled us over, they pulled out their guns, they told the other swimmers to get down on the ground, they got down on the ground, I refused. I was like, we didn't do anything wrong, I'm not getting down on the ground, and then the guy pulled out his gun, he cocked it, put it to my forehead, he said, get down, and I was like, I put my hands up, I was like, whatever, he took our money, he took my wallet, he left my cell phone, he left my credential, but he took my wallet and he took What is there to lie about? Like, why? Keep in mind, this interview took place roughly four to five hours after the incident had happened. Ryan was still drunk at this point, and he had been awake for more than 24 hours on a bender. His recollection of the man cocking the gun and pointing it at his head would send this story into worldwide news. Oh, Ironically, this is exactly what people suspected when they found out the Olympic Games were being held in Brazil. As many media outlets questioned if Rio was safe enough to host. Around 42,000 people are killed in gun crimes every year in Brazil, God, and from damn. January until May 2016, the Rio de Janeiro area had 2,036 murders. One article reported parts of a mutilated body washed up on the shore of a beach next to an Olympic venue. Uh, Although Brazil's government granted $895 million to cover Olympic- And then they're gonna say, come to Brazil big security spending, it was said it might not be enough to fund police officers with the necessary equipment to keep crime at bay, with one anonymous officer saying, you encounter a drug trafficker with lots of ammunition and you have 20 bullets. It's absurd. Showing the world that Rio could be a safe place for the Olympic Games was the number one priority of everyone involved in the local government. Mm. Hosting the Olympics can create billions of dollars in revenue from tourism before, during, and after the Games, along with boosting the economy and building all the infrastructure needed to host multiple sports. After Ryan's robbery story, Brazilians received tons of additional fuel to the narrative that their country is unsafe and dangerous. Damn. So Brazilian authorities were scrambling to find out the real story, and they found some inconsistencies. Uh -oh. They were given footage of Lochte entering metal detectors. Oh shit, 4K. Okay, here we go. Well, to be fair, he was drunk though, so it's like, even if he did like, li like lie and add some shit, he's drunk. Come on, man. Why, why we gotta lose his whole career? The Olympic Village at 6.56 a.m., which was roughly 40 minutes after they claimed to be robbed. The footage was released in slow motion for some reason, and Brazilian judge Caleb Blanc de Nop believes the men did not show any signs of having experienced violent crime, particularly pointing to when Lochte playfully boops Fegan on the head with his credentials. But this seems like extremely minimal evidence to prove that the men had not experienced a crime. Maybe they were trying to just act natural and forget about the evening. Maybe they were distraught, but the slow motion footage is hard to interpret. Brazilian investigators were also unable to find evidence to support the swimmer's claims, nor were they able to find the taxi cab driver whose cab was allegedly pulled over. These inconsistencies were enough to accuse the swimmers of reporting a false crime, which is a crime in itself, and the judge ordered a seizure of Lochte and his teammates' passports so they could be brought in for questioning. Oh, I guess being interviewed on the news is considered reporting a false crime, because Lochte never reported a crime to the the police in the first place. That's insane. After all, he thought he was robbed by the police. From there, two of his teammates were pulled off their flight home, but by now, Lochte had already made it back to America. Ryan probably felt guilty that his friends were being held back in Brazil. Damn. When he got home, he changed a few key details of his story, which would be the biggest mistake of oh, his life. Oh, no. Oh, no. As you can imagine, every news outlet tried to get another statement from Ryan, and he would give one to Matt Lauer on a private phone call on Wednesday, August 17th. However, Ryan changed a few details of the events. At first, he reported that they got pulled over in their taxi, and that the men displayed to him a police badge, as well as pulling out guns. He changed his story to say that they did not get pulled over, but rather when they left the bathroom to get back to the taxi, they told the taxi driver to go, and he didn't move. He said, let's go, again, we've got to get out of here. And again, the taxi driver didn't move. That's when he says two men approached the car with guns and badges, told them to get out, and to get on the ground. But the big difference that Ryan changed in his story was how he described the gun situation. Remember, Ryan initially said that the man cocked it and put the gun to his head. Uh -huh. Well, he changed it to, that's when the guy pointed the gun in my direction and cocked it. Now, the basis of Ryan's story remains the same, which is that he was robbed at gunpoint. But with all the negative press Brazilians had been getting, 
shedding, Ryan's discrepancy was enough for authorities to dismiss Lochte's story as fabricated. At this exact moment, what the police can confirm is there was no robbery in the way that it was reported by the athletes. Authorities then released multiple security camera angles to the public that Here. display the events of the evening. Here we go. Many news outlets use the footage and Lochte's change of the story to run pieces saying, mounting evidence indicates Ryan Lochte fabricated Rio robbery story, or Lochte lied, or Lochte gate. I'm just interested to hear like, why? I can't stress enough how much worldwide news coverage there was about this story. It was literally everywhere. Every major and minor news outlet in the world ran a piece on Lochte, which took all of the spotlight away from all other Olympic athletes. That's crazy because I, I, this is my first time hearing this dude's name, bro. Media didn't cover the games, they just wanted to talk about Ryan. A judge in Rio ordered Ryan prohibited from leaving Brazil and even tried to collect his passport. The craziest part is that still, seven days after all this chaos and worldwide reporting, nobody knew the real story from start to finish. Most of the world had already branded Lochte a liar and didn't even care to hear the truth. But the real story is not that much different than what he said had happened. Then what are we doing here? What are we doing? On August 14th at 6 a.m., Ryan Lochte, Gunnar Bentz, Jack Conger, and Jimmy Feagan stopped at a Shell gas station to use the bathrooms and- Them Wendy's shifts had a nigga busy. We feel you, bro. What? <laughs> what are you- t like, what even made you say that? Did you just get off work or something? They had been drinking all night. Like, when they arrived at the- When did we- <laughs> What? Gas station, the bathroom doors were locked, so the four swimmers went out back and relieved themselves in the bushes. Okay, here Walking we go. back through an alleyway, Ryan saw an advertisement poster, and in an intoxicated state, he thought it would be funny to rip the sign off the wall. Now you can see the footage released by Brazil's Globo TV cuts one full minute out from 6.07 and 33 seconds AM to 6.08 and 33 seconds AM. The camera cuts to the sign being on the ground. You can't actually see who ripped the sign down. Why was that footage cut? Is that not the most important part of the investigation? The Rio police chief also stated that the intoxicated swimmers vandalized a gas station bathroom, breaking a door, mirror, and soap dispenser. USA Today eventually did their own investigation and release the footage of someone knocking down the sign, but you can't confirm who it is. Yeah. They also went to the bathroom the next day to investigate the damage. They uh. found the mirror and the soap dispenser were not vandalized, and they were not replaced as they were not brand new. So everybody lying. Everybody just lying. And at the back are the restrooms that reports say were badly damaged, though we can see no sign of that now. This can like he gotta blow his nose. The reports are saying that the sound of the sound. That's terribly sorry, hold on. <laughs> badly damaged, though we can see no sign of that now. This confirms sorry, that I the don't real police sorry. are actually the ones who lied about him vandalizing the bathroom. That's why you ain't remember all of this happening in 2016. Wendy's had you whipping the yay to survive. <laughs> whipping the yay to survive. Uh, okay, yeah. 2016. Um... Was I? I don't even. I don't even know the timeline. I don't even know the timeline. But, uh, damn, 2016 is like that. Eight years ago, that like eight years ago or some shit like that. But yeah, I, I just don't remember this. I also like I wasn't watching the news. I don't watch the news, so. Now the footage doesn't necessarily prove that Ryan ripped the sign down, but he admitted to doing it. So. Anyways, the metal sign was huge and made a loud sound as it hit the ground, prompting workers to go over and see what happened. The four swimmers walk back into their taxi and almost immediately a security guard leans into the cab and seemingly points a weapon Whoa! at them. Two minutes go by where the swimmers are trying to convince the taxi driver to leave until they ultimately exit the vehicle. Ryan Lochte begins walking away off screen. Two of the other swimmers go back to the alley where the workers show them the damaged sign. The swimmers don't speak Portuguese so they can only guess that this is what the security guards are upset about. Oh, the shit. final angle shows one of the men immediately fall down, almost like he was pushed. Then they keep putting their hands up as they are backed onto a curb where they are asked to sit down. You can see one of the guards has his hand on his hip. 
It was at this moment that the guards pointed their weapons at the swimmers, oh my God. which can be 100% confirmed because the guard did report to the police that he pointed his gun at them and demanded that they pay for the damages. Perhaps the biggest and most important piece of the entire story is that the swimmers say nobody spoke English and Brazilian authorities say that there was a translator so the swimmers knew exactly why they were being held. The reason why that is so important is if there was a translator then Ryan knew who these men were and why they wanted money. If there was no translator, then how could he possibly know if these guys were licensed security or oh, just random shit. thugs robbing Wait a minute. him? The Brazilian chief of police lied about the men vandalizing a bathroom, and they even confirmed that one of the security guards used the weapon to, quote, contain the swimmers so they could not leave without paying for the damage. The firearm was used in a situation in which they were contained. When they were contained, the firearm the was put away. Wendy's and Sherwin Williams shifts a dis nigger slaving. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, but bro, Wendy's, bro, shout out to Wendy's though. I wouldn't have had it any other way, like, Wendy's, like, humbles you. Like, working at a fast food res restaurant humbles you, bro. Hey, but the police chief went even further to speculate as to why Lochte lied, that it was because the swimmers were having a secret rendezvous with women. The first information came from a driver who had took two young women who left the event. These young women had made out with the swimmers, Veloso said. The swimmers had a reason to tell a story that wasn't true. Again, the Brazilian chief of police pushed a narrative that had absolutely no basis of proof. That's what I'm saying. You're lying. Like, wait, you're lying facts. Perhaps they were trying to get revenge on him for making their country look bad. Now with the full story broken down, it becomes more clear that both Lochte and the Brazilian police lied. You just have to ask yourself which is worse. Most people think Lochte is a vandal, nothing but a scummy tourist who doesn't care about being a guest. Well, I feel like if you're a police, like a, I feel like a police officer, like lying obviously is bad, but if you are a police officer, lying, that's worse. You're the fucking police. Like if you lie about this, in national headline news, what have you lied about in smaller cases or like in a traffic stop or like when no one's looking? in a country and thought he could do whatever he wanted without consequences. Others think he was incapable of thinking clearly due to the alcohol and that the security guards, if that's actually who they are, holding the swimmers at gunpoint was an extremely over the top way. Yeah, to also, you can't you can't react like that either as a security guard. It's, it's well, like what? They, I, I'm pretty sure they say in stores like retail stores, if somebody's stealing something or like there's a robbery, you let them just do it and it'll be dealt with later. You, you should, probably shouldn't try to be the hero and get all the stuff back. I don't know about y'all, but I for sure if somebody was coming in to rob Wendy's, I'm not going to die for Wendy's. Like I'm not going to die for, for, for the money in a Wendy's register at all, bro. If I'm working at Target, I'm not going to die for a goddamn uh, 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 Spider-Man t-shirt and some jeans that somebody wanted to steal. Bro, you got it, bro. Like, it is what it is. I don't care if you kicking shit. I don't care if you pissing on the walls, bro. I'm not getting into that shit, bro. Get him to pay for a cheap sign. All of the major facts of the case were not only true. Like, I feel like unless I'm getting assaulted or something. Would you ever do a Wendy's ad? But you got a dress up, Wendy's uniform and all, spatula, hair net, and a beautiful attitude ready to serve a nigga some fries and burgers. Hum. I'd actually do that. I feel like I feel like it'll like take me back to like a nostalgic era. I would I would I would do that, man. True by Lochte's statements, but also confirmed by the Brazilian authorities. The lie that Lochte was vilified for was his drunken account on the beach where he said a gun was pointed to his head, when in reality, the men were standing a few feet in front of him, pointing the gun at his chest. Everything else he reported was true. They were drunk, ripped down a sign, approached by unmarked. That's like a minute little detail. And plus, I think he was drunk while he was telling the story. And chat, if there's a gun, anywhere like even if the gun like this like like you holding it like all the way over there or like you holding it like this i'm gonna still feel like yo he pointed a gun at me like you have a gun i know what a gun is used for bro you not just showing it off like you you trying to tell me something like you going to use it so it's basically yeah you not pointed at me but technically like it's it's pointed at me bro <laughs> your eyes is looking at me with the gun in your hand you you pointed at me unnamed i'm just saying that to say like i don't think it's crazy that this is destroying his legacy for the like this is what's about to destroy his legacy his story was true except for where the gun was aimed
random men with guns that they did not understand, who coerced them out of a cab and pointed guns at them until they paid money to be released. Nobody wanted to clarify the story, the damage had been done, and it was better for Ryan to just accept defeat. He hired a crisis PR team to save his image, which led to him apologizing for everything. No! That's why I'm taking full responsibility for it, is because I over-exaggerated that story. What? Nah, you gotta fire them niggas, man. And if I'd never did, done that, we wouldn't be in this mess. Although his story was almost entirely true, this apology stamped him as guilty. Not only was his character completely smeared all over the worldwide media, but the Brazilian authorities also tried to file charges against him that were rightfully dropped. Even though he wasn't going to be held criminally responsible, Ryan's main source of income had completely dropped out from under him. Four of his major sponsors, Ralph Lauren, Speedo, Cineron, and Airweave, all decided to terminate their contracts with him, which were all worth an estimated $1 million. This caused a huge hit to his finances. From living in a 4,200 square foot home, he had to move into an 1,800 square foot apartment with his family. It's estimated he only had $20,000 left in savings. And obviously, no new sponsors wanted to associate with only had $20,000 left in savings. And and obviously, no new sponsors wanted to associate with him. On top of this, the United States Olympic Committee announced he would be suspended for 10 months, making him ineligible to compete in the 2017 World Championship as part of his punishment. Scrambling to make any sort of cash, he auditioned to be on the popular USA television competition, Dancing with the Stars, where a few viewers staged a protest during one of his performances. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Wow. As security detained the stage crasher, a few women in the crowd wearing t-shirts with Lochte written on them covered by a no symbol can be heard chanting, Liar. Bro, I kinda- bro, I feel bad, man. I feel bad. I feel like this is how, like, like, this is like the bad part of social media. Or like, yeah, social media and just headlines in general. Not looking into things, just going off of things at face value and not doing any research. That's just kind of, that just kind of sucks, Damn, bro. they did bro dirty. Nigga, if you write gun on a piece of paper, you pointed it at me. If you say gun, you pistol whipped me. If I see a gun, you shot me. Fuck you, town bout. Bro, like, come on, man. I feel, I feel bad. Like, I feel like that's just like. Because you got to take everything into consideration, all right, with, with everything that has been provided in this video from Patrick CC, who is a reliable source, okay? The guy was drunk in his first... He was still, like, probably hungover in his first interview, man. He was probably... He was still, like, hungover or probably still, like, a little tipsy in his in that first initial interview. And maybe he... Yeah, he got a little carried away when he... Because, I mean, yo, we saw the guy with the shotgun reach into the car and tell them to get out. Like, my nigga, that, like, I feel like that's a gun pointed at me. Like, if I'm telling that story with the homies, I'm like, yo, bro, they, like, there's a guy that came up to the taxi, pointed a gun at me, then some other dude came out all over a sign. Like, I, I knocked over a sign, and these dudes started pulling out guns and was, like, telling me I got to give up the bread. Like... As if it couldn't get worse for him, he was suspended from the Olympics again in 2018 by the US Anti-Doping Agency after he posted a picture on Instagram of him taking an IV. He was not taking drugs. He wasn't using steroids. He did not take a banned substance, but he got an intravenous injection of B12 vitamins, which he took to prevent himself from getting sick. But since it exceeded 100 milliliters, it did not matter what was involved. He broke anti-doping rules. Oh my god, this nigga can't do nothing, bro. He, he, I feel like they just don't like him now. I feel like they honestly don't like him now, bro. And they needed to make an example out of him again. I Ryan responded, path, a rule is a the way of the hero. And they found you amusing for a while, the people of this city. But the one thing they love more than a hero is to see a hero fail, Damn. fall, die trying. Damn. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. Oh my God. It's, it's so fucking true. That's actually so fucking true, man. Rule, and I accept that there is a technical violation. At this point in his life, Ryan's reputation was completely tarnished. He was so almost bad. flat broke and was now banned from- I feel so but bad. But the going let soldier boy tell that fake ass robbery story. Oh my God. Man, fuck these niggas. Oh my God. Oh my God, wait, that's, that's so fucking true, bro. 
Soldier Boy said he fought like the army, bro. <laughs> he said 20 niggas ran up in his house and he was jumping around. Pa, pa, pa. Pa, pa, pa. <laughs> and this thing is living the life. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> no way. From swimming for another 14 months. Maybe if I like. <sighs> so maybe if I like go to sleep and not wake up, it'll be fine for uh, everyone. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. Because I just didn't want anyone to be sad or hurt by, by me. Ryan spent his days drinking his pain away, until a few months later reports came out that he was going to rehab for alcohol addiction. The only silver lining is that his girlfriend at the time stuck by his side through everything. W they are now woman. married and they have two children. Today he spends his time public speaking, telling his story, and teaching swim clinics around the country. He tried one last time to qualify for the US Olympic swimming team in 2021, but ultimately finished three seconds short of that goal, putting the final nail in the coffin of his swimming career. You know, I'm a fam uh, I'm very humble. I mean, I have a big heart. I care a lot about my family. He's part of my family. This whole swimming community, they're all part of my family. You know? I'm, and I'm a dad. I'm gonna go be a dad right now and give my kids a hug. See, that's like, it's like no matter what you're going through, no matter what you deal with, if you got a good, like, relationship and children at that, bro, it's hard to be it's it's hard to be like in a deep rut, bro. Yo, Patrick, this was a good ass video. I'm not gonna lie. This this like I actually feel I, I feel for this dude. I don't wanna say feel bad because like you know, he has his he has his his girl and his his kids and stuff like that. It's just like unfortunate. This situation is so fucking unfortunate. And it's so crazy how this is the first time I'm hearing about this dude. They literally like swept this dude away. Like they swept this dude under the rug, bro. Yo, Patrick, I don't know, but like Netflix need to contact you. We need some like more like, like positive story. Like this wasn't positive, but like the outlook of the video. A lot of the shit that we see as documentaries is like of people whose life, like they just, it just ended bad. Like these people still have a chance. Like this guy still has a chance to do something. He could write a book and sell the book and, and like, you know, damn bro. I, just, I feel like shit because that's how the headlines can be. That's how the internet works. They can just take shit and spin it it could be a tweet and people will just believe it at face value because it has a lot of likes or a lot of retweets bro that fucking sucks bro